Okay, to, to move forward for the pre-clearance, uh, submit the pre-clearance. Am I correct, Councilwoman Benjamin? Oh, I can't speak for him. It's, that's, that's his item. Yeah, 
uh, of this agenda for public discussion. Okay. I, I think uh, all public work needs to at least uh, 10 to 12 dollars an hour, and, uh, and we got to get them on there 7 dollars and 25 cents. Because it don't make no sense, you can't make no decent living on 7 dollars and 25 cents. So I, I'd like to put it on for public discussion. Okay, thank you, Councilman Randolph. Okay, that leads us with 10 items for the consent agenda. We have a motion on the floor. Go ahead, Councilman. Okay, we still are discussing, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I have a question. Go ahead. Read, uh, before my question, would you read number three and number three and five again, Ms. President, please? Yes, ma'am. Number three is to approve to deny the Harbor Road liquor store Browns to license. Due to non compliance of the city ordinance, the set item number five is to approve public safety administration personnel are supplementary pay in the amount of $1,800 each. Okay, that's what we're talking about Okay, number seven, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm confused at number seven because I didn't hear, I don't believe I heard. The fire chief asked for that last night. Is he on the phone? Uh, yes, ma'am. Let me, let me unmute. Did he ask, did, did you say, read that again. Did you say something about 10% something? Would you read that again, please, number seven? Oh, oh let me unmute the fire chief. Okay, unmute him again. Please read that again before he answers. Chief, are you on now? Chief Brown? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, no, read the to approve budget adjustment in excess of 10% for the year in order to cover the purpose of vehicles in the amount of $42,000 with 35 face masks and seven half packs. Okay. So, Keith, did you put that in all in the same breath last night, 10% and 42000 no, I think uh, President Gray was saying in excess of 10%. For the year. So what I was asking for was approval to purchase this equipment uh, that we yeah. need to have. Okay. Mr. President, I would offer that we uh, adjust number seven to include the, the amount he gave us last night. He gave us okay. that amount last night. And it okay. covered everything he said. How, how much is that amount? Do you call? Uh, it was approximately ninety thousand for for all of it. Ninety thousand dollars? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 For the uh, entire election process, is that the resolution, Mr. President? Yes, ma'am. Resolution number 136, 1920. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any additional questions? Call for the vote. All right. Roll call, Madam Clerk. President Boone? Yes, but everything except for number five. I'm going to say for um, number five. Councilman Bowling? Yes, for everything except for number two, I think that needs to be thought out a little bit longer. So are you excited or? No, yes, uh, everything except for number two, and two would be no. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Youngblood? Yes. Councilwoman Jackson? Councilwoman Jackson? Do you want to present? Jackson. Oh. Um, Jackson. Yes, thank you for unmuting me. I've been hard. Okay, I didn't mute you. Okay, I didn't mute you. Okay. You are unmuted. Um, okay. So I'm looking to uh, abstain on three, uh, abstain on eight, and I, I would like to ask one question of Council Warman Benjamin. On five, have this? Uh, have we had a pre-clearance on the public administration personnel? 
public uh, for uh, public sec how do you say for public safety? Yes, ma'am. Administration personnel supplementary pay. Okay. So just um, been pre cleared. Public safety is on the list, so it doesn't have to be pre pre clear. It's on the list. Okay, so the administration is fine. Yes. So all uh -huh. yes on everything but number three and number eight. Okay, no more trouble. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Benjamin? I, I, I want, uh, on number seven, I did not hear $90,000 on last night on number seven. Uh, Mr. President, before I cast the vote on number seven, I'd like to tease to ask, to tell me if 90000 is different than the amount he gave on last night. Chief, uh, Chief. Uh, council members, at this time, 
we have a plastic hearing. I'm a turner with the attorney Madison. Attorney Madison. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, Councilman, and Councilwoman. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Mr. Harlan Spencer, who I, I focus on, I trust him on. Can you check just to see for sure, Mr. Mr. President? Okay, I'm trying. I don't, I'm not just going on unmuted everyone. Uh, I don't know that particular number, but I will do it on unmuted everyone. I got you. You have to way of identifying him. What you're saying? Just to, no, sir. Okay, well, I, I, I trust that he's going to Mr. Spencer, Mr. Chief, uh, I'm on. Not, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Mr. Spencer's not there a moment ago, and, and the reason I asked for him to his presence is over. If there's something I misstated, he can, he can uh, make whatever point he chooses to uh, by way of correcting the record. But Mr. Spencer has purchased property at uh, McLeod, and uh, McLeod. I'm going to ask everyone if you would meet your phones. McLeod has to do with Lavity, I think he's back to the record. That's what he's And he has a, a wall on his property. Uh, the uh, wall spaces, I believe it is, McLeod. And it's, he's, he's had a hearing before. Board of Adjustment seeking either a variance or, or an application of the city's right of way to the extent that it would not, the city's uh, right of way would not encompass part of his property and that wall on his property. Uh, he sought the assistance of uh, at least one, if not two, legal counsel, uh, one of whom I spoke with uh, today. Uh, I believe I've spoken to both of them. Uh, but only one of them today. And the purpose of the hearing is to determine whether or not the city council is of a, uh, of a mind as the only body that can authorize this to vacate the portion of the property. I believe he's asking for approximately six feet of the city right away. He vacated to, so that the city right away would not encompass a part of his property to include that, that uh, wall uh, on, his, on his property. Um, the only consideration that I thought comes, uh, we have two considerations that bear on the decision making process. Nice. The council, I believe, uh, one is uh, Constitution Section 94, uh, which uh, prohibits the giving of anything of value, property, money, uh, public property to a private entity, and that exception uh, we've dealt with recently would allow for economic or industrial development to take place, uh, but it involves uh, the steps we took uh, recently in another matter uh, also being included. I'm not saying that's what the council has to do. I just thought it was uh, my legal obligation and uh, professional and ethical responsibility to, to bring that to your attention. Uh, the other concern is that the only possibility of a negative as far as the physical granting of property to vacation of the city right away to Mr. Spencer would be that if the city were to ever decide to widen that road, uh, there might be some difficulty in widening it depending on why you would and how far you would widen it. Uh, but that's a matter that is in the future and only, and only can be determined uh, if and when that were to actually happen. Uh, Mr. Spencer, uh, I think basically as property owner saying that he deserves the right to own his own wall. Well, the question then becomes, uh, did he buy the property with that uh, in mind and what the council wants to do about what he will be that that's uh, And after that, at this point, I will open the floor to Mr. Spencer to make his own case. Okay. Also, go ahead, Mr. Spencer, then we're going to call it off and open it up. Uh, anybody who's in favor of it, if you are in favor of it, or if you are opposed it, if you would come forward and uh, state your name and your address. Uh, Mr. Spencer. Am I there? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay, so basically, um, it's encroaching on our property since the easement was not there 
when Mr. Strickland built it, it was added in between here, between the time that he built in 1982 and passed away in 2006, it was added without the knowledge of the estate. So in 1982, when he built the wall on the property, the easement did not exist, and the boundary lines on the survey showed that the easement did not exist. In the time that that easement was added, and it encroached on the property, which is actually being an asset to the property and being taxed through the property taxes as an ownership of the property. So with that in mind of easements as far as widening in the road, we already have a solid on one side. So what we did is we asked through legal counsel, they said that you own that land right out and the encroachment of the variance was never given legitimately through the paper and through public knowledge. So they said that Mr. Strickland had the right to give that to the successors of the property. And that's what we're trying to do because it goes on side of our, the wall was built prior to the encroachment of the variance. And that's all I have to say. Okay. At this time, we're gonna open it up for the public, uh, anyone who's in favor of it. At this time, please come forward and uh, state your name and address. And I'm not in favor of it. Okay. Anyone in opposition of, of it, of the easement? Anyone in opposition? Okay, that closed the public hearing. Council, what's the pleasure of the council to move, move forward or uh, denied. Mr. Oh, Attorney Jackson. Oh. Attorney Madison, what is your legal recommendation to the council? I know you voted um, the laws and given us um, various statements, but can uh, you give me your your legal opinion on how this matter should be handled? And it's all pretty fell when you repeated to us today, I don't I don't recall you sending to us to read, so I would love to have your insight in the matter. Well my my insight is that Mr. Spencer is saying that the the property line didn't encroach on the city's easement or right away, but the city easement or right away encroached on the property line after uh, uh, a certain point in time. Um, I, that's a question of fact that in a, uh, a legal, a judicial action, which is not the a public hearing, uh, would have to be determined by the trial of fact. And I can't say to you whether or not that's You true. are muted. You can mute or unmute yourself by pressing that, star six. Uh, the council can make the decision either way with Mr. Hat, Mr. Fence's uh, 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 assertion. Uh, can afford some privilege or can refuse it. The, 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 the city has the right to the domain. So uh, that argument is probably one more of an equitable issue as opposed to a, a, a legal issue. Great. Um, so maybe some wrong um, words, some words for um, your legal, your insight rather than your legal opinion. Give me what you legally would tell us to do. You know, like in the email message, you said my legal opinion is that you may do this. Give us your legal opinion. You've read the law. You haven't been forwarded to us. We're not abreast of the law. And this is my first time hearing of any encroachment. Um, and so tell me, uh, or we need to delay it until we get further information because you're saying one thing and you're saying you don't know you have to have you researched whether this actually happened? So, I mean, I don't have enough uh, information to make an informed decision tonight. That I don't to you. Yeah, yeah. Would, would, I, would it be out of, out, of, out of order that we just carry over to the next council meeting? And uh, when we gather all our facts, uh, what's the pleasure of the council? That's what I would like to see happen, council. I, 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 I have no problem with that, Mr. President. I think we're making sure everything together. I think we can get the move. Forward, just let it uh, go to the next council meeting, do all the research, and then I'll try and look into it and give us more insight on it. Because it's new to me. I'm, I'm just trying to hear about this. And, uh, uh, and again, I think we're going to ride by and see what Mr. Hobbit talked about as well. You know, so 
Uh, I say we just need to uh, turn our standard to the next council meeting. Okay, so we'll carry it over to the next council meeting. All right, thank you. Uh, council members, you know, on last night I forwarded you the uh, AG's opinion, and I know Attorney Mountain did speak on it on last night about, uh, you know, was I authorized to sign any contracts? Uh, also, I have on the call is uh, Attorney Bobby Siegel, uh, who uh, also uh, wrote to the AG's office for an opinion. Attorney Siegel, are you on the line? I, I am on the line. Okay, uh, how you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing fine. Okay. Um, <coughs> go ahead, Attorney Siegel. Well, uh, City Attorney Major Madison and I actually speak good afternoon. We are, are running behind. I'm running behind. <laughs> uh, Randy Williams, with you. Uh, we are getting ready to uh, bring the Selma City Council meeting already in progress. They have already uh, done the consent agenda and they've done the approval for uh, the last meetings. And they have also tabled one of the items we had and one item for the consent agenda. So that's where we are now, uh, as we now join the uh, city council meeting already in yeah. progress. Okay, I'm sorry about that, Attorney. Uh, we broadcast our uh, uh, council meetings. Uh, go ahead. Ron. Okay, well, uh, I was saying that City Attorney uh, Major Madison and I spoke about the opinion. I also spoke to the general counsel for the examiners of public accounts to make sure everyone was on the same page. I think everyone is on the same page. Uh, the key question was whether uh, the city council's uh, enacted ordinance 177-17-18, whether or not based on that ordinance, the city council president uh, could sign contracts for the city ultimately approved by the city council when the mayor was absent or declined or failed to execute the contract. The answer to that question is on the first page of the opinion and it says except in cases in which the mayor has exclusive authority uh, the city council can uh, through ordinance, direct the council president to sign contracts that the mayor, uh, when the mayor's absence or declines or fails to sign. Y'all will recall that the examiners of public accounts were concerned that that ordinance, uh, 177-17-18, uh, the examiners felt that that ordinance conflicted with the provision of the Alabama Code 1143-83 that said that the mayor shall execute all deeds and contracts. This opinion makes clear that that statute, when read together with another statute that's uh, set out in the opinion, and I don't want to get into a lot of detail, but uh, 1147.5 makes clear that the mayor's authority under the statute that the examiners were concerned about was is not exclusive. So that as a general matter, the council can designate someone else, in this case the council president, to sign contracts when the mayor declines or is unavailable uh, to do so. The opinion goes on to say that there may be statutes with respect to certain kinds of contracts perhaps or with respect to certain duties that the mayor has that expressly give that responsibility solely to the mayor and in those cases where the mayor has uh, exclusive responsibility uh, uh, the council cannot designate someone. Instead, the council would have to go to court to require uh, the mayor to sign under those circumstances. The opinion gives an example of that. 
that opinion is that there's a statute that says the mayor has a duty once a year to appoint an independent public accountant or to get the examiners of public accounts to conduct an audit. That is, according to this opinion, uh, an express duty of the mayor. The mayor must do it. And if the mayor fails to do it, the city council cannot uh, direct someone else to do it. Rather, the uh, city council would have to go to court to require the mayor to do it. But overall, the general concern of the examiners uh, uh, was not well-founded, and that is a general matter. Uh, for contracts where the uh, mayor is not given exclusive authority, uh, by statute, it would take an individual statutes on particular kinds of contracts, perhaps, to give the mayor that exclusive authority. On other contracts, the city council may, as it has done in the questioned ordinance, uh, give authority to the city council president for someone else. Uh, to sign those contracts. So those contracts that had been signed uh, uh, by the council president, uh, in my opinion, are valid contracts. Uh, under this opinion. Ms. President. Hello? <laughs> Anybody there? Yeah. yeah, we're here. We've got solid now. Mr. President. Yeah. Okay, we may have lost, uh, Attorney Siegel, we may have lost Mr. President for just a moment. And in the case when we lose him, I, I take charge. So let me just do that. I was actually uh, calling out to us because I had a question. So I'll take myself first. Uh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You're back. Okay. So, uh, Attorney Siegel, uh, am I understanding correctly? Uh, I have two things. The first one, are you saying that? the examiner uh, that had some conflict or confusion, uh, their conflict or confusion is in conflict with the statute put together. Uh, their questioning does not make sense, maybe? Well, what, I, what I'm saying is that the attorney general found that the examiner's concern was not, in fact, a concern because although the statute that the examiners uh, felt conflicted with our ordinance seemed to conflict if you looked at the literal language, but there was another statute that uh, the examiners did not look at that made, uh, according to the Attorney General, uh, make clear that the mayor's authority uh, to sign contracts generally is not an exclusive authority. So essentially this opinion said that the examiners expressed concern uh, uh, relative to the uh, to our ordinance being inconsistent with a particular statute was was not actually a concern. Okay, and so to follow up that with my last thing. So should we be concerned about the examiner correcting that, or should we just leave that alone? No, I, I just leave it alone. I, as I said, I spoke to the uh, uh, the general counsel for the examiners and just said we want to make sure that if we go forward, I want to make sure that what I'm going to tell the council is consistent with what your view is, because we don't want to run a file of the examiners uh, as we follow what I believe this opinion says. And he said, and I think uh, City Attorney Madison uh, agrees, I think we were all uh, had a consensus about it. Uh, you know, I'd ask City Attorney Madison to, to uh, you know, correct me if I'm incorrect about us agreeing on it. I certainly, we had a great conversation, uh, I believe Saturday, maybe Sunday, Saturday or Sunday. And uh, I, I think I think we 
All three of the lawyers who've discussed it agree on. Okay, thank you. And then finally, um, when that the duty of the mayor is exclusive to the mayor, I'm understanding you to say that we must get a judge uh, to compel him to do his own job, and we cannot do it for him. Yes, yeah, so and let, let me just say uh, one thing. It, the, the opinion correctly makes a distinction between of the mayor's obligation that is discretionary with the mayor and those obligations that are not discretionary. They're called ministerial duties. Our position in requesting an opinion from the attorney general, our opinion was that if the council has finally approved a contract, for example, the mayor's responsibility to sign the contract is not discretionary. The mayor can't say, well, the council's approved it, but we're just not going to enter that contract. That's a ministerial duty. Uh, and so if it is a ministerial duty, and we'd have to look at the particular statute involved, if there was a contention of exclusivity, if it is a non-discretionary obligation, then you could go to court and ask the court to direct the mayor to sign the contract. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Attorney Siegel? Any other questions for Attorney Siegel? Any other questions for Attorney Siegel? All right. Thank you, Attorney Siegel. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, now to the announcement. Councilwoman Benjamin, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Um. I wanted to. Uh. On, on last night, we talked about the uh, possibility of a farmers market in the area of Ward Four that 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 Article Section Six and Five. Uh. And Councilman Shore saw um wanted um some more clarification. And so I did seek um our planning um uh, director. Um, Mr. Henry Thompson, so we can kind of uh, briefly, we don't have to take a whole lot of time unless there are further questions, briefly walk us through. We, we, we've been through this process for many years, and uh, um, Henry Thompson is the one main person that was uh, on this with me. Uh, in addition to Charlotte Griffith, at one point, uh, I had given permission by the owner, and at that point, that owner, uh, that particular owner, one of the owners, had passed away, and then it was almost like we were starting over, but not really, because we had uh, different documentation and, and approval. So, uh, Henry Thompson, if you could expound a little bit about uh, our little process uh, since last night, we talked about last night. Uh, greetings, City Council. Good evening, Mr. Thompson. Okay, um, Ms. Benjamin is correct on um, the fact that we have been working on this um, project. Um, she has been adamant in regards to uh, pushing for this uh, farmer's market over in the area that's in question. We have done numerous, uh, numerous amount of testing on the area. This includes state-wise being from ADEM all the way up to the EPA in regard to making sure that this area has been designated as cleaned. It also went through several separate tests outside of that uh, to make sure and maintain that this area would be safe to place a farmer's market over there. And I think about maybe six to eight months ago, we called over and spoke with the EP regional person for our area in regards to that fact. And she kind of confirmed the same information as we had as well in regards to that we would be safe in moving forward on moving along with this project. Mr. Thompson, I yes. have a do, do, we have, do we have any of that in writing? Uh, my, my simple question was, have we been cleared by the EPA 
and the answer is simply going to be yes or no. And if the answer is yes, what documents that would validate the uh, the uh, ability of a farmer's market being established? So, are there any documents that I, is there any documents that you can share with the council? Yeah, we have we have both environmental assessments done on the area as well as uh, ADM as well has a laid out document where they have done even more extensive tests outside of our assessments in the same area in regards to before. So there is documentation on it, and I have a copy of both assessments that have been done on the area that's in question. And um, we can get the document from the Alabama Department of Environmental Management as well. Okay, can you can you make a comment just putting in our mailbox, Mr. Thomas? Well, well, those two assessments are pretty large. They're okay. about 400 pages. Wow. Okay. And um, they're really expensive. Now, the letter that uh, comes from ADM, we probably can get something uh, from the the director over there to uh, deem it safe, but uh, both of the environmental and I can print off the page that basically fell. Okay. There was no no finding. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Are there any other questions for Mr. Thompson at this time? Right. Thank you, sir. Councilman Bridget, any other announcements? No, I would like to call the report uh, as I always do later on. Okay. Any other announcements by any other council members about their respective wards? Any other announcements? Okay. To the mayor's report, Mayor Melton. Mayor Melton. Go ahead, Councilman. I think I think the mayor has sent us a communication. I think uh, I think we were right on point with. Uh, uh, giving him the okay to move forward with getting RLPs for the three cemeteries. Uh, and thanking the consent of judge, that was, that was oh, really good. Yeah. So I think the man needs to be aware that the council is uh, on top of his concern about the cemeteries. Uh, and the council has agreed to look at the RLPs as to what these Three contracts would do with the cemetery that they're making uh, a proposal for. So let's wait and see what uh, the contracts bring to us and we'll deal with it. I want to get our RFP. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Coon, are you on? Mr. Coon? Mr. Coon? I know Mr. Cole said that he would be here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Cole. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I'm here. Hello, Council. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I, I didn't hear the question. I think we just want you to come in and give us an update like you did last night of some of the questions that the citizens had as it, as it relates to the opening and closing of the grade and who received the funding, the amount. Yes, yes uh, council members, the city of Selma receives the uh, charges, the monies for the opening and closing of the graves. The confusion may arise from the fact that uh, most of these charges are paid at the funeral home and our department bills the funeral homes once a month for the charges that they've incurred either in opening or closing or buying grave spaces. We, we send out bills once a month. Uh, the funeral homes pay their bills. We take the funds and turn it in to tax and license. We get the money receipted. And it's my understanding the money is still in the city general fund. Okay. Are there any other questions for Mr. Cohen at this time? Mr. President? Yes, sir. I think the public needs to be made aware. You know, we talked about it in our work session. The public needs to be made aware that we're moving quick, fast, and in a hurry to um, give Mr. Cole the manpower that he so richly deserved to make sure 
that the weekend of children will not be interrupted. Uh, I think Mr. Cole uh, expressed to us that the three men will give him uh, the minimum uh, manpower that is needed that the uh, funerals get, uh, will not be able to be interrupted simply because they have a manpower shortage. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I think we rectify that on the consent agenda by allowing him three additional workers their contract at 9.75 an hour. So we are moving forward to address that that, that, that concern that was in the community, that, cl- that clarity cry in the community about not being able to have funerals on Saturday. I uh, think we have... Mr. President, Mr. President, Councilman, so, I mean, Councilman Randolph. So, uh, Tony's going to continue to be on Saturday? Yes, sir, it will be. So, if someone's getting this room for this Saturday, would they be able to have this room? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Coon? Thank you, Council Member, for approving those uh, additional people for us. We appreciate that. Thank Mr. you, Mr. President. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President. For sure. I, I think Mr. Cool needs to be made aware that I that I am proposing that the cemetery department be included in the temporary pay for COVID nineteen. And of course I had uh, uh, put not only the cemetery department but the but the recreation and public health services, those three departments need to be included in the temporary period for COVID-19. So Ms. Cohen, I want you to know that I requested the council to consider that and who the way to see where we go. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilman, I mean, Councilman Randolph. Uh, you still have a right now? Ms. Cohen. Yes, sir. Yeah, I want you to be aware that I'm recommending that all you men I think I'll make at least ten dollars an hour and get the men off that seven twenty five so they can make a decent living. Cause that seven twenty five is a joke and I and I don't like that. Men's been working out years and years at seven twenty five. We need to do uh, better than that to our uh employees. Yes, sir. I'll I'll pass that on. Thank you very much. Can you hear me, Councilman? Yes, sir, we can hear. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. I'm just Mr. Go ahead. Go ahead, Council. I agree 100 and 50 with my colleague, Councilman Randolph. I think this is something that we could take uh, up at our budgetary hearing. I think this is something that, that we need to be uh, focused on uh, because we have talked about it more times than not. Uh, but I think talking about it without any real action on it is all for not. Well, I would suggest that during the budgetary year, Mr. Randolph, that we bring this subject back up, not only for the cemetery department, but for all departments, uh, ensure that they're making a livable wage. Okay, at this, at, at this, at this motion, uh, at this junction, Council, the sure you want to go ahead and move forward. Uh, are there any additional questions about the temporary, uh, supplementary pay for the public works, uh, recreation, and, uh, Cemetery, so you're going to go all three of them separately. I guess we're at the junction now that we can discuss and uh, move forward with the, with the vote. All right, any part of the discussion? Yes, Mr. President. Okay, I heard Councilman Randolph, I heard Councilman Lashore, and Councilwoman Jackson. Councilwoman Jackson, okay. Go ahead, Mr. President. So I'm, I'm concerned about can that money be used, that COVID-19 money be used to pay uh, public works in the uh, cemetery because from my understanding it's a uh, public safety, you know, so I'm not going to break the law if the if, if law don't think that we can pay them out of that money. Uh, my thing, okay. Okay. My thing would be just to move. If you're gonna vote, the only thing I guess we can move forward on is just vote to move forward for the clearance to see with the eligible. And that's all we're asking, Mr. President. That's all we're asking. Okay. 
that's what I thought. Okay. okay. Okay, I'm going to 
thing is, uh, I want to go back to uh, two or three weeks ago, uh, to a council meeting, or a council meeting ago, uh, when the Lord Jack asked me to come before the council to talk about the uh, zero turn thing that we need to be able to continue on to keep the parks and things clean and grass and stuff like that. But if you notice, the, the grass and stuff been built, I think council show just got his car uh, cut this up there, it was almost uh, knee high. Uh, same thing he said when this family got cut, but that grass was then cut on a regular basis in all the parts when we had to zero turn. I asked Terry about the, 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 the ones that were being repaired. I think he got off to the South Coast Women's President, uh, uh, Gerald Parrish, one of them. But anyway, they, they got one out of the shop, and it's back in the shop because it wasn't never run correctly. And what happened, that grass is steady growing and instead of getting further and further behind on some uh, repair, I mean, some grass getting cut. So, but when they were having the, 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 the equipment to work with, they kept this, these paws looking nice and kept them uh, on a regular basis. So I'm hoping, Fran, that uh, next week we can have the, the, the zero turn completed. If not, forward to the person and, and, and try to hope that this council will at least get them guys at least one zero turn so we can go ahead and try to keep these paws up to date like it should be because they're really getting out of hand because snakes are crawling. I'm crawling everywhere. I'm getting cold all over about snakes and this mess. Uh, and the other thing is uh, I brought up uh, uh, trying to map the looking for them. Uh, some of my football team is in the process to get her to have their football league uh, started. Uh, and, and the athletic director uh, will call in about the statement whether the fans be able to come in. And I want uh, the turn amount to uh, talk about that. It's also about reopening the tennis court. So if uh, the turn amount you is on the line, you go ahead on and uh, and kind of bring that up to file on what, uh, what the mayor mentioned to us, what we need, what we need to do to move forward with that. The turn amount. Uh, yes, I was taking making some notes about the other things and taking my phone off of you. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, okay. You, you're asking me to update a report on discussions with the mayor, mayor about opening the park. Oh, I'm sorry about the park for football and the uh, tennis courts. Yes, yes, yes. Just, just, just for the regular land, you can hear what, 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 what we don't go from there. Uh, the, we have not had additional discussion uh, uh, as of yet. Uh, and I can talk to the mayor uh, uh, about that. Uh, in the morning, Mr. Mr. Johnson. Okay, well, what I just want to, to what you had mentioned to us on yesterday in the work session, I just want the, the, the view to, to uh, hear what you had explained to us on uh, that the reason the all we were talking to Paul. You want me to repeat what I said last night? So, that was right, and I think I mentioned that to you last night. Yes, if you don't mind. Right, what I said last night was when the mayor was approached by me at the request. I think of, of, of you, Councilman Johnson, concerning the, uh, and after discussions by the council of, of having uh, football, high school football, resume at Block Park, uh, the the uh, statement was made uh, both about uh, what to do if the city or the mayor would agree to uh, the park being open, uh, including uh, the ways preparations are. Uh, 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 arrangements being made to deal with any social distancing or pandemic, and as well as uh, the tennis courts were concerned. The mayor said that he would be happy to take care of those things if the uh, budget uh, was was uh, approved, voted on. Oh, okay, okay, I mean, we need more manpower to do what we need to do to help uh, make clearance for the certificate uh, they to come in to keep the place uh, clean and everything. So. Okay, well, I, I'll try to meet with the mayor and talk with him a little bit more on that. And also, he said a tennis court, same thing about the tennis court, he said that um, uh, he's not quite ready to open it up yet. And, and so he he, 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 right, he said, he said that in respect to both the uh, black box as a whole and, and the tennis court as well. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I'm sure you have a question. I do. Um, I heard Councilman Johnson. Uh, mentioned some, uh, a zero turn, and I think I heard him say we need some more zero turn. Uh, <laughs> the, due to the kindness of Bush Hall, we were given spring making new zero turn. So, are we saying that we have enough people who are using those and, and they're working so hard that we need some new ones, 
are reclaimed. We don't know where those zero turns are. They were donated by Bush Hall, and therefore we need to buy some more on top of those because they're missing. What are we saying, Captain Johnson, so I can be clear? Okay, what I'm saying to Councilman Benjamin is that the recreation came to me and they got two zero turns down. Now, when I brought it to you, you all back here uh, two or three weeks ago, the, the, the understanding was go ahead and get them repaired. Okay, they're in the shop now getting repaired. So right now, I think they got a total of three zero turns and one bush hall, which I think the young man from the cemetery went to the public work and he's the only one who can operate the, uh, the bush hall. So right now, that's why he left the cemetery. So right now we got three uh, zero turns. I think that all together is working, and the public work is using them three. The city uh, work, I mean, the uh, uh, recreation department workers don't have anything. I guess I, I'm not sure where they kept them. If they got anything, I know Jerry said they got one out of the shop with the carburetor, but all they was been doing is backfiring and spit, but they put that back in the shop. So I'm not sure if they rotate using uh, the. Uh, the zero turn that they got, I'm not really sure, but all I know that uh, public work is working overtime and, and 30 days of the week to try to help get some of these parts cut up. I wonder why the parts were being cut, but I realized then that uh, the public work has to try to get the parts, you know, they do overtime, uh, getting get these um, parts and uh, other areas cut. Uh, they're doing that so many days per week uh, to get it done with Terry and, and uh, uh, Gerald, <coughs> Gerald was doing it as well. So right now, I guess they're waiting on a long mode, but they were trying to get uh, back to uh, to try to get back out there. Uh, but right now, uh, right now we just need equipment. I mean, we just need to put more around. Stuff do well. Uh, and right now we need yeah, we need to get y'all. I had I had checked with the treasurer, and on the PO there was one. There was only one submitted for repair, so I'm trying to, this inventory thing, it vexes me. Every time we talk about inventory, where things are, including, I, you know, I have, still have in the back of my mind, where is the excavator? And so, when I checked with the treasurer, there was, on the PO, there was only one submitted for uh, repair. Uh, and so, if, if plural, more than one was submitted for repair, then the treasurer is incorrect. And and therefore there is a zero time somewhere that we don't know where it is or a few zero times somewhere that we don't know where they are. Well at last time I talked <clears throat> and we talked and I think uh Ms. Ms. Wade mentioned that there brought two that we want to replace two and then we, we voted to go ahead and get two two repaired. We well, understood the last time we talked about this. Now, whether two went to the shop, I don't know. I'm just going on the back on the last time and check the minute. The minute state that we were putting two zero turns in the shop, and we both all agreed to that. So now, if the one guy out of the shop, and it's already six hundred some dollars, and it's fitting it and backfire, which had to take it and put it back in the shop again. Now, I'm not sure. Now, if they, now I'm not sure the PO came in on that. Uh, Miss Wade may be on the line. She can. Can answer that question. You know, all I'm saying is. Her, let's let her answer that question. Ms. Wade, right. was there one two zero turn uh, submitted for repair, please? Ma'am? She's probably on the internet. Hey, Ms. Franklin, why are we waiting on Ms. Wade to come on the line? Uh, yeah. uh, Councilor, Councilor Jones had mentioned uh, that we don't have the manpower out there. Uh, I know a while back, you know, we talked about uh, uh, when the council talked about getting uh, the city attorney to go back to the mayor and try to hire some people back. So, so we don't gave up on that. Uh, uh, we're still trying to get some of that uh, workers back so we can get this stuff done. Council, um, good evening, Council. Um, Council, Council Johnson, 
you are correct. Initial conversation, the chair, um, the director stated that there were two that needed to be repaired. Two of the bush hog um, zero times needed to be repaired. However, I only received one purchase order for X mark of zero term being repaired. And I don't know if that's an off brand of bush, bush hog, but that's the only purchase order I received from recreation for a repair for zero term. So that means, wait, you're saying that only one, per, oh, there's a, a PO that exists for only one, and you're not sure if it's even the one that came from Bush House because it's an offspring. Yes. And yeah, so we just... still need inventory concerning all of these zero terms, whether they are broken or, or otherwise. We need them accounted for. We need to physically see where these zero terms are. Okay, Councilman, I, I think we can expedite this. Uh, Councilman Johnson, just have uh, Mr. Jackson come before the council, and that way we can get it from uh, straight from him. Uh, right, right. And, 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 Yes, Mr. President, I would like the council to physically see all of the zero terms that we saw donated to the CFL. Okay. And also, Mr. President, uh, of the work has, I think, three zero terms themselves, three or four. Now, also, we, we can recall zero terms got stolen from the public work out there <laughs> on Ward Avenue, and zero terms got stolen from out there to the complex of sports place as well. Now, whether they were push on, uh, 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 zero charge, I don't know. All we know that, uh, uh, they felt like it was an inside job was done, and some said it wasn't, and also we had police report was on that. Now, no officer came before us to tell us what their finding was. All I know is, I'm not sure what insurance covered that to replace them. I don't know. That, we, we think they did return the call. Well, what we can do is, go ahead on that. Man, hold on, hold on. All the only thing we can do is just go ahead on this and let uh, Mr. Jackson come and, and give us a story and Councilman Johnson because we're going to be stuck in mud with this conversation here. Mr. But, President, I have one final point on that, so just Mr. Go President, ahead. before we move on. I have one final point because our administrative assistant uh, has some paperwork on the, the stolen uh, more. Uh, let's just ask her, Ms. Ellison, do you still have that paperwork concerning that? Y'all know that these public buildings have cameras. Uh, Ms. Mrs. Ellison, do you still have the paperwork uh, concerning the stolen more or quote unquote allegedly stolen more? Do you still have the paperwork on that, Ms. Ellison? Make sure she's unmuted, uh, Ms. President. Okay, then we're going to move on. Mr. President, Mr. President, before you move on, let me see that. Mr. President, while we're trying to get this. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, could we have Ms. Wade pull the recent inventory? Hello? I said on the list, and then I go through that uh, inventory list to identify what zero term morals we have on hand, and how we go from there. Okay. Yeah. All right. You want to go ahead, Cal, Miss uh, Ellison, then we'll move forward. We've got to move forward. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to ask, I was going to ask the question, Cal, so yes, I still have the paperwork on uh, the board that was stolen. One was stolen from the city, and one of them belonged to the Dallas County Commission. And that was a brand new board that Sean Van Dyke purchased, and it was stolen six days later. I do have the paperwork on that as well. And also, I do have a uh, inventory list from all capital equipment, the recreation department that I had before the layoff. Okay, can you put that in our mailbox, Ms. Ellison? I sure will. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, ma'am. All right, Councilman Johnson, closing remarks. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, well, now let me finish this. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, this is where I'm at with this, Mr. President. So the county is just some guy, they don't have nothing to work with. Every time reparation or uh, uh, public safety come up, they always got to be a backlash about something. It's 
uh, and then finally, we meet uh, now, we were meeting weekly, we meet now uh, every other week. Every two weeks we meet for a several Dallas County town hall meeting COVID-19. If you haven't attended that meeting, make sure you do. I send the information out to uh, the media and we post it on social media as well. So the call-in information is always the same. And for the sake of the recording, before I close out, I'll call that out now. So the call-in number is 605-475-5950. And the access code is 04-08-01. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. Yes, sir. Councilman Ryan. Yeah. On, on last night, I mentioned about uh, $200 for the uh, poll workers for the city. Uh, um, I made a mistake. I was asking to, to give them uh, a $200 increase due to the COVID. So that would have made it a total of $300 instead of $200. Because it's already making a hundred dollars. Also, uh, so can we get a turn and see with three hundred dollars a big feasible, feasible uh, for the uh, poll workers? Yes, sir. We did ask for last night. Like, Attorney Madison, you will be, you look at you're currently looking into that that request now. Am I correct? That's correct, Mr. President. And I did get the message, uh, Councilman Randolph, about the, the adjustment that you made. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Captain Miller, sure. Closer involved in committee report. All right. Yeah, Mr. President. Uh, 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 public works. When they got when they got rid of the issue of right, the cemetery around July twentieth, my first thought was to uh, call a committee meeting to address it. But then as an afterthought, I thought this is something the entire council need to uh, take hold on. <clears throat> and of course you agreed. That's when we decided not to move forward to committee meeting, but to bring the concerns of the cemetery in our work session. And I'm kind of glad it did because things did get resolved. Uh, the garbage in our city is still a problem. It's not getting any better. And I don't see this council trying to deal with it. I think there are ways and means that this council needs to address this garbage situation in our city to make sure our citizens understand and truly understand that what they're doing is breaking the law. Not only that, colleagues, is creating a very serious health problem. And we need to deal with this garbage situation. There are many ways that we can do it, but we have to do it as a as a council, not as an individual. The overgrowth, the mass, and the filterism of our city, that's just what it is. Some of the cause public work don't have the manpower nor the equipment to do what they need to do. So subsequently, so we have to depend upon contracting out with independent contractors. I think it's a waste of money, but nevertheless, it's something that we have no choice but to do in order to get some semblance of work being done in our respective wards. The city really needs to deal with this garbage, y'all. This garbage is a plague, and it's going to create some serious problem. Y'all think we got a COVID-19 problem. It's still got to get out of hand. It's going to be very devastating here in our city. Once again, this council needs to deal with it. This COVID-19, in my closing remark, this council right now said it is devastating. I really don't think a lot of people really understand the magnitude of the destruction that this disease and this virus is causing. It was alarming to hear my colleague Benjamin say the death toll now is 21. Just from 9 to 21. So we just there's a reason that COVID-19 is still on the margin and it's still taking lives. Just do what you can to protect yourself and your families until there has been a, a, um, a cure for this very deadly virus. I mean, this thing is just, it's getting out of hand. It really is it's just getting out of hand now. And we don't do all, we need to do protect ourselves 
then we're going to be in that no more. It's going up in the death toll area. He says out there, if you see something, say something. When you see crime being committed, you don't have to get in between the crap and in between the clothes. Just identify who you are. Make a phone call. You don't have to identify who you are. You see something, say something. And then maybe we can have a real sense of a decent livelihood in our community. Crime don't pay. Good night. Thank you, uh, Councilman LaShore. Councilman Dennis. No committee report. I would uh, just like to say I'm so thankful for um, Attorney Siegel um, and the council for reporting to the tenacity that we showed in spite of the resistance that we received regarding contracts and trying to get work done in our um, respective areas of the city. Um, to the citizens of Ward 3, um, we're moving forward. We have several contracts. Um, you should see the cleaning, the uh, removal of trees, and the filling of potholes very soon. Please continue to call me regarding respective areas that uh, have been overgrown and overlooked in alleys, and that we didn't, don't even regard as alleys anymore. We don't um, realize that they're there because they haven't been taken care of in so long. Please uh, make me aware we're going to put that on the list and get these things done. Thank you for allowing me to serve this to you all, Council Good night. Thank you, Council Woman, uh, Council Woman Jackson. Council Woman Tom. Uh, under my report on the public building uh, committee, we, uh, number one, we have tried to get the uh, city hall cleaned up, which we have not proceeded with that. Uh, that uh, also fund the day to day operations where uh, was last told us that that would be, it would have to be done on the, the administration on the day to day operate to get the city hall cleaned up. But we do need to get it clean, like Captain Show said, that we have to come together and go in there and do something that we need to do to uh, make our city hall safe for our citizens to come in and into a clean building. And also I want to say this to the citizen in Ward 7, that we were supposed to have a ward meeting tomorrow on the phone, but I haven't got all of my information up. As soon as I get all my information up, because our clerk has been real busy this week because of uh, the election and uh, some of the things that I require, uh, she would have to pull up and I haven't received all my information out of the finance office. So I am going to proceed on this uh, project that we had done on the corner of uh, First Avenue and Bunton. The citizens are entitled to know how uh, the funds were spent. So just give me time, uh, be patient with me. Uh, we will have our ward meeting and I will give you a full report once I get all the information up. And uh, be blessed and have a good night. Uh, thanks, Council Woman uh, Thomas. Our next work session would be Monday, July 10th, and our next council meeting would be Tuesday, August 11th at 5 o'clock. At this time, the children entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Motion by Councilman Bonnie, second by. Councilman Jackson. Councilman Jackson, Councilman Little Short. All right. Meeting adjourned. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.